What's going on, you Bigfoot bowling ball buffers? Welcome to Gruntspeak Not So. Live from the lair! <laughs> I'm Gleep Clap, that's floop dude and we got a paranormal story for you today. All right. Uh, we actually read one of his stories uh, on our paranormal stream a week or so ago. Uh-huh. And then, going through uh, older emails to see what <laughs> stories we might have missed, we got this one from back in February about uh, Jim and his personal encounter with what is commonly known as the Dog Man. Hmm. And apparently, uh, Pop is only the third person that this story has ever been shared with. Oh, so yeah. and now we're going to be sharing it with you. And I'm curious if this takes place in Michigan, because there's been Dog Man sightings up north. Interesting. <laughs> Do you like stories about serial killers? What about psychics? How about a psychic serial killer with a conscience wiping out the filth of society? Yeah! If you thought Dexter was a great show that went soft in its final seasons, these are the books for you. Introducing The Jericho Files, written by an old infantry grunt who has seen evil firsthand and digested it into grade A gore porn with five star reviews all around. Click on the link tree in the Meat Gazer box and buy your copies today on Amazon. You filthy, dirty riggers. The creature is a lot like Bigfoot, but not quite. It is much more of an animal type of creature. I'd heard stories of it for years and thought not much of it. Back in 2005, I dated a Native American woman, and after talking to her family, whom were full, redacted tribe descendants, my outlook changed a bit. Her uncle and I were talking and drinking one night when we began to discuss certain topics that I found of interest, star people, Bigfoot, and the Dogman. Mm -hmm. He said that he had knowledge of the Dogman, and I called him out as a drunken liar. Don't know how much you know about Native Americans, but to call them out on anything to do with tradition usually leads to a good fight. Yeah, yeah, we had a, a guy from, uh, he was an Apache when I was a ranger. He actually spoke Apache. Nice. And he was just the most quiet dude. I mean, a killing motherfucker, don't get me wrong, he's an airborne ranger. But uh, you could talk about his mama, you could tell him whatever. But the <laughs> minute you badmouth the Indians, he got on his feet and he got livid. Well, there you go. They were like, whoa, hey, we're just fucking whoa. around here, bro. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I understand that. I understand that. Don't scout me, bro. Don't scout me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was that insensitive of me? Uh, he continues, after more of me prodding him and so laughing at there not being such a thing, I even threw down $500 right in front of him to prove it. Well, that's somebody dedicated. Now, are you prepared to lose <clears throat> that money is always a question that I ask when somebody wants to lay money down. Yeah. Well, and normally, that's why I, I don't bet, usually don't bet money. I just yeah. bet food. Yes. And, and usually big money bets kind of betray how you're feeling inside. Mm -hmm. You know, because most of the time, if you throw down a big money bet right off the bat, it's because you're really not sure. But you want to be right and scare the other person away from the table. Yeah, it's the bluffing effect. Exactly. This was a bit of a dick move because I knew he was pretty broke and couldn't match the bet. Honestly, I would not have done it if I wasn't drinking. Mm. Yeah, it happens. Name redacted. He told me that he'd show me how real they were. To this day, I'm surprised he didn't just punch me in the mouth for being a dick. Uh, well, as okay. long as you know. <laughs> as long as you know. <clears throat> A week later, I get a call from his niece, and she tells me that I need to meet with her uncle at a truck stop that he worked at on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. It was my day off, and I had nothing to do, and I did feel like an a-hole for messing with him. I planned on apologizing to him about it. When I met him at the truck stop, he tells me to lock my car and get in his truck. He asks me if I have any plans for the next day. I said, no. <laughs> he told me we're going to take a little camping trip. I'm going to see a dog, man. Now my asshole puckered a bit, but I did have a Glock that I carry for protection because of my job with the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. It's just good manners to carry one with you everywhere. Before leaving the truck stop, he tells me that he's going to prove me wrong. And after today, I will never bring the subject up or tell anyone where we went, especially his niece. Mm -hmm. After making me swear on my very life, we left the truck stop. Okay. This is a man who's about to win $500. <laughs> I'm rich, bitch! <laughs> Either that or he's planning on scaring you stupid just to prove a point. Yeah. Both of which are valid defenses. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. 
After making me swear on my very life, we left the truck stop. Where we went, I still will not disclose, but I will say that it wasn't totally off limits to the public, but I will never go there again, even under the threat of death. Whoa. This is the rhetoric of a changed man by what he saw. Okay, yeah, I would say that, but he said Mohawk. Yeah. Uh, Mohawk is somewhere in the Northeast, I believe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, in a subsequent email, he mentions First Nations people, so maybe this could be like... Uh, like Upper New York, Lower Canada, in that yeah, area, possibly. Because yeah. I, I do know that there are sightings of the dog man in Michigan. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to look into that. Do we know the paranormal pop excursion? Yeah. Hey, if you can let us know where this is, <laughs> you know, we'll bring protection. <laughs> Just All right, yeah. Just for you know the the hot Native American niece, not for the the dog man. Yeah, yeah. good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> After a bit of driving, we get to a dirt road that goes for a few miles to a pull off where we get out. Name redacted tells me that we are going to take a little hike into the woods, but before we do, he takes out a jar of what looks like bone ash. Well, I suppose it's better than somebody taking you out in the middle of nowhere and then grabbing a jar of their own urine and drinking it. That's, that, that might just be like protective powder, the equivalent of like holy water for, to a priest. The power of Christ compels you. Proceeds to take a handful of it and lightly cover his arm's face and sprinkle some of it into his hair. I suppress laughter, but I also know that they take tradition quite seriously. He hands me the jar and tells me to do the same. I hesitate until he tells me that I have to do this to be safe. I could tell that what I was, tell you. Yeah. I could tell he was totally sober and not screwing around. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I did as he did with the ash. Told me to hand over my handgun so he could secure it in the truck. I don't <laughs> know. At that point, I'd be like, oh, wait, wait, what? Um, I think, what, what am I thinking? Uh, I yeah. No. Fuck no. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Though I will say that uh, I have. Some individuals who watch the show who have let me know that uh, the Dragon Breath, uh, Dragon Breath shotgun rounds, mm-hmm. uh, they seem to be effective on otherworldly things like this. <laughs> and uh, the way they explain it is, hey, energy is fucking energy. Yeah, maybe you can't hit them with a bullet, but you can burn the fuck out of them with the energy of the fire. Well, there you go. And I was like, that's kind of weird, but kind of illogical okay i haven't tried that myself nor do i want to this is just rumor control rumor control of course again i hesitated but he insisted that it was not for my protection but for both of ours Uh uh-huh okay he then handed me a small day pack with a sleeping bag i asked how long we planned on being out here because i was concerned for my car that we left at the truck stop Name redacted. Said it would just be overnight. Okay. I took the pack and we headed out into the woods for an easy hike about two, three miles. It was early June, so it wasn't really hot or cold out. The weather was clear skies and sunny. We entered the woods at about 1,300 hours. At about three miles in, brought to my attention some marks on a tree. Uh. There were three large, scratch-like marks that were made. The marks were deep and were three long marks that ran parallel to each other with a separation of about two to three inches. That's a big claw. All right, now, now hang on. Three. Three. Okay. So when people go into haunted houses and get scratched up, it's usually, it's usually three. Yeah. And these are separated by, he said, about two to three inches. So you're talking wider than I can spread my fingers. So this yeah. is a big claw. Uh-huh. I thought, okay, so we got a bear around here. So fucking what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear. Somebody is trying to talk the piss out of leaving his bladder. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like bear markings, uh, there's usually four or five scratch marks, and they are fairly big. I- I've seen some of those up in uh, New York State from black bears, but I don't think they're that far apart. I, I can't really because they're padded, you know. Well, the thing is, is I I really don't know. I, don't, I, don't I know, know either. The bear, the bear ones, the black bear was about yeah, that they're, big. They're pretty big, yeah. So I mean, if it was a grizzly bear, brown bear, or something else, it did just get bigger. The size matter. No. And it works both ways. <laughs> this is how they mark their territory, and that we find such marks every few hundred feet. I wasn't sold on this whole thing, but I came this far, and I wanted to see what he had to show me. 
We continued on for another <laughs> mile and came to a ridge line that overlooked a large creek. Name redacted. Motion for me to get down and look about a half a mile up at what appeared to be two wolves standing in a grassy bend drinking some water. I always have and still do love wolves and even did some volunteer work at a place called Wolf Mountain in Norwich, New York. New York. Ah. So I think I might have been on the mark there. We watched them there from an elevation of about 60 feet. I couldn't tell how big they were exactly from our location because I really had no frame of reference to go by, but they did look a bit bigger than normal. Uh huh. At first I thought it was cool, but no big deal really. Until one of them... Whoa. Whoa. Stood up on its rear legs to sniff the air. Oh, shit. I still didn't want to believe this to be anything but some odd animal behavior until the other one stood up, and then they both ran back into the tree line behind them. Now I was a bit surprised by this. Uh Uh-huh. Yes, I have seen dogs get up on their hind legs and even walk a short distance, but they didn't move like that. No? No. Their legs appeared to be oddly bent backwards, almost like, well, it's very hard to describe, honestly. After they left the creek, and I proceeded to hike to a spot that had been cleared away in a circle for about 30 feet with an old stone fire pit in it. It was now about 1,700 hours. I gathered some firewood to build a fire and put up a small tent that he brought along. While I prepared the fire pit with the wood, I took notice of spreading the jar of ash around the perimeter of our campsite. Uh. Once our camp was set up and we gathered wood, it was about 1,900 hours. I began asking him about the creatures. He said that they were not like Sasquatch. They did not trade with tribes or seek interaction with them. I asked if they were native to this area alone. He told me that the elders believed that they migrated south during the winter for better hunting. According to him, they did hunt local game and always did so in pairs. Clever girl. He said that if you saw one, another was always somewhere close by. Uh Uh-huh. Pack hunters, I asked if they would simply attack people because they could, or were they more territorial? He said they were more territorial, Mm -hmm. but that there were areas that they would protect more so than others. As a rule, they would simply scare people away rather than outright attack them. When the sun began to set, we made a small fire that illuminated our camp in the edge of the woods about 20 feet away. It was at about 2,100 hours that things began to happen. Once it got dark. Here we go. I heard howls that started off in the distance. Not unusual for the area, but these seemed a bit different. There weren't a lot, maybe three or four, but what caught my attention was the fact that they began to get closer. Shit came out of our asses and we rocketed through the roof. They were coming to check us out and that no matter what, don't run away or else we might be attacked and killed. I was no longer laughing or thinking this was bullshit. For I I had never seen as serious as I did right then. Wow. When the howling sounded as if it were only a hundred yards out, everything went quiet. No bugs, no birds. Yeah. I had never heard the woods get that quiet ever in my life. Wow. Then came the sound of what could only be described as football players running through the woods. Mm. Whatever it was, was heavy and not trying to be stealthy. Now, I've heard that kind of noise in the squally rainforest of washington state yeah and it was explained to me that it was a moose running running through the underbrush okay and um i mean i'm like yeah could yeah, could be legit could moose be. is a moose it's like yeah you know, at the shoulder like eight feet tall yeah fucking huge yeah if it's, those things go for a run in the woods you're gonna hear it yeah, it's literally a, a flesh bus moving through the <laughs> forest flesh bus yeah <laughs> Uh, just like Lizzo going out for a swim. <laughs> and it scared the fuck out of all. Of, I was with oh, a I platoon bet. of Airborne Rangers, and my platoon friends like, "All right, I need a patrol base right here. Yeah, you know, let's do this." <laughs> <laughs> Had a huge white man fire in the middle. And we're all like, uh, uh. He continues, whatever it was. It stayed just out of the light of the fire and numbered at least three, maybe four. Mm. At times, it sounded bipedal. At other times, it sounded like a dog running from tree to tree. There I saw, by the faint light of the fire, a set of pointed ears very similar to that of a German shepherd sticking out from behind a tree at about seven feet up. I watched as very slowly the head and snout peered out from behind the tree, and I saw the eyes shine of two large eyeballs looking in my direction. We could hear another thing behind us now, moving slowly, taking a position to the rear. 
My mind raced thinking that any second one of these things were going to charge in and attack us because we were definitely in their territory. And you're unarmed. Yeah. I am not humble enough to tell you that I was scared shitless in that moment. Uh, there's no shame in that. No. I not mean, at all. literally, a human being's, that is our default setting, mm-hmm. is fear. We are only the apex predators in our domain. Correct. When you go out to theirs and you're unarmed, you're worm food. Well, like if I took you, locked you in a phone booth with a rabid house cat, it could possibly kill you. Yes, it could, because it's faster than you are. Yeah, and like we're evil, hairless monkeys. We are not. You know, we have no natural defenses. The only thing that makes us different from them is we manipulate the environment into very, make it into very deadly things. Yes, but in this environment, <clears throat> at this moment, this dude. Uh, He's at the mercy of nature. Now, I'm going to be honest. I would not have gone down there without at least a 12-gauge. I would agree with that. And my back would be to a tree all night long. Yep. No sleep for the ranger. Fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) But it's about to get interesting here in a second. Then I saw that crazy fuck reach into his bag and produce a package of hot dogs. Whoa. I quickly asked what the hell he thought he was doing as he began to toss a few of the hot dogs just outside the ring of ash in the light of the fire in front of us. Oh, dude, this is getting good. For a minute or two, which to me now felt like an eternity, everything seemed to stop and be still. A dark shape moving through the woods before us caught my attention. It moves low to the ground at first and reminded me of a large bear. I watched as the creature came into the light of the fire. It was on all fours and moved slowly to the hot dogs that were there in the grass. My mind went into a sort of shock. There before my eyes was something that I could not comprehend. It was there, but it couldn't be possible, or more so, it shouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had one of those moments where you were in sudden, total disbelief of what you are seeing, but... That was that very moment for me. I had a similar one when I saw that jet black shadow in Abu Ghraib. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is that? This is one of those life events that makes you rethink everything that you've been doing. Oh, I know. Yeah. Like, well, it must be a conspiracy theory. No, no. The bottom line is this, okay? We don't know shit. Yeah. All right? I mean, we split the atom, what, 70 years ago? 80 years ago? And yeah. somehow we have people out there, there is no God, blah, blah. You don't fucking know, you don't know shit. shit. Shut the hell up. Most of these people haven't even traveled outside of the hometown where they grew up. Yeah, you're correct, yeah. Like, if if you think that the United States is the entire world. You're out of your goddamn mind. And, and you know, and, and obviously Whitey must be the, the single biggest cause of all strife and evil in the world, despite being only 6% of the world population. <laughs> You're a special kind of stupid. Hmm. Especially if we were to put you into a situation like this, I think you would let us all know exactly what you're made of. Shit and piss <laughs> as it rockets out of your pants at breakneck speed. <laughs> but you know what? Honestly, there's no shame in there's, that. Not, yeah, there is not no in shame. this particular scenario. There's not. No, no. I, I've seen I've seen guys in very strenuous situations piss themselves. Yep. And quite literally, we're like, just change your shorts, man. You're fine. Or sometimes you just get too damn drunk. Yeah, that does happen. Yeah, that, that, that happens that's, too. But that's there's, a whole there's shame in that. <laughs> but that's but a whole different this. animal. That's a whole different animal. Uh, just like this here. He continues, it did not look quite like the movie Werewolves, and by that I mean it did not look like some horrible nightmare creature, honestly. It most definitely had the features of a wolf, but they were different. The hands, and I say this because they did not look like paws, were what I can only describe and liken to that of raccoons. I saw this very large, at least seven-foot-tall creature sniff and then gather the hot dogs before us. Wow. It did not eat them in front of us, but very cautiously turned and moved off into the shadows with them. It all happened in probably less than a minute, but it felt like forever. And a few things that were burned into my memory of it all. This thing did not move exactly like a wolf or a dog when it was on all fours. It had a bush tail, and at one point I did see what were its balls. Those were very much dog-like. I just have to say this. Mickey's in there! 
All right. Sorry. Just fucking with you. Stop looking at the dog's junk, sir. You're making him uncomfortable. You did. It's just, 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 you know, he can't go when you watch. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the back legs were oddly miss or disjointed. They have to be. Yeah. They, they, literally, if they're going to walk on the back feet, that they have to. There has to be a modification. Yeah. If they're going to walk on all fours and on their yeah. back legs, there's got to be some difference there. Especially if they can walk on all on their hind legs for long periods of time. Yes. You definitely have to have a uh, a change in the bones to support yeah. that weight. Especially if they're going to maintain the same sort of speed that they would have on all fours. Now, I think they run, uh, to be honest, it, you know, animals that run on all fours run faster than bipeds. Yeah. But if they were to have, you know, you'd want comparable speed if you were, like, foraging. Yeah, yeah. You're probably right. The back feet did appear very much like a dog or a wolf, but not quite. The toes appeared different, and the muscles seemed oddly more human-like than that what you would see on a dog or a wolf. After the one took the hot dogs, we heard them all move to a location about 100 yards away. Name redacted. Acted as if he had seen them before and was not scared like I was. He told me that they were now feeding and would soon leave us alone for the rest of the night, but we would have to leave by first light. Mm. I was too scared to even speak a word and just went to the tent. I wouldn't have gone in that tent. <laughs> I would have been awake all fucking night. It wouldn't shock me if he was awake all night. Yeah. And just went into the tent with just to make sure I wouldn't he wasn't even go alone. in that fucking tent. <laughs> What he said was true. After about five minutes, I could hear the creatures moving off to the south of us. Soon after they left, the woods became active again with the regular night sounds. I did not sleep that night and played over what I had saw repeatedly. Could it have been a person in a suit? Well, if so, they were wasting their time and money on my dumb ass because it was the most lifelike thing I had seen right down to the ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At 0500, we broke camp, made it back to the truck in record time, took me back to my car where he reminded me never to speak of this to his niece. It was a big taboo to talk about them, let alone show them to a white man, and to keep the location of them a secret. Mm. I did not and still do not doubt that he would take my life if I betrayed that secret. His niece did ask what we did, and I told her that all we were doing was going camping and nothing more. All right. Yeah. I don't know if she knew more or not, but we never talked about it again. All right. Even though I can't explain what the hell I saw that night, I know that I saw it, and I know that it was not fake or imaginary. I give you permission to use my story on the condition that you please change the names of people and tribe because she is still alive, lives on the reservation, and could get into big trouble with elders if they ever found out. If you wish to know more, feel free to ask, and I will answer what questions you have. The only thing I will not tell you is the location of where we were. That I have to take to the grave with me, not just because I swore not to tell, but because I don't want any jackass going there and getting themselves hurt. As I stated before, I will never set foot in there, even if someone threatened me with death. Oh, okay. All right, so apparently I'm going to have a lot of sound editing to do on this one before <coughs> it goes out. Yep. Because normally how we select these stories as we read like the first third and then we like the reactions to be authentic so the rest of it we like to let it play out on us the same way it would play out on you correct as a result of that now i got to go back and redo a whole bunch of editing for this video because he decided to wait until the absolute last possible moment to say well you should probably change the names of the people involved damn it jim <laughs> uh, you should tell us fix that. it yourself or tell us in the beginning all right, it's all good, though. Yeah, I should have known. You never trust a fucker named Jim. Well, I do know <laughs> he's talking about the dog man. Yes. And the dog man has been spotted in the northeastern portion of the United States. Michigan, Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania. Uh, I believe in the uh, western portions of Virginia and in, in West Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. And even in, in parts of Kentucky. Good times. Yeah. Well, has anybody else out there seen the dog man? If you have, send us your stories. Or if you better yet, if you got video footage. That yeah, and if you see any uh if you have any stories of apparitions, ghosts, any paranormal shit, just send it in. We love that stuff. Yeah. We'll do a whole other paranormal live stream, dim the lights in here, you know, because we all know how much Pops X loves the darkness. 
You're growing get me inside sued, bro. Her. Stop. <laughs> we'll see you next Stop. time. Stop. <laughs>